Hey, fourth graders, we're here for lesson two of point of view. Lesson two, are you ready? So let's get started. So the last time that you were with me, we talked about point of view. And today for our I can, I can compare and contrast two types of point of view in order to help me determine which point of view is used so I can understand what I'm reading. Compare and contrast. Now we know what those words mean. Compare is similarities. Contrast is your differences. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you remember from last time that we met, first person is using the pronouns I, my, our, me, us, we. And third person is he, she, they, their, her, him, and them. Those are the pronouns that you would use for third person. So as a review, let's go right here into use first person or third person pronouns to complete each sentence. For first person, blank, love to paint. If we were gonna use first person, what pronoun would we use? That's right, we would use I, I love to paint. For the second one, we have blank soccer team is playing in the finals. If it's first person, what pronoun would we use? Right again, my, my soccer team is playing in the finals. And for the last first person example, blank can't agree which book to read. If it's first person, what pronoun would we use? Right again, we, we can't agree which book to read. So those are all first person pronouns. For third person, what pronouns would we use? Blank is a great artist. Well, for third person, we're gonna talk about Xenon. Xenon is a great artist. And we could use for the pronoun for the second one, blank helped the team win the game. He helped the team win the game. Or she helped the team win the game. And the last one for third person pronoun, blank are reading about vampires. They. They are reading about vampires. Good job on your review. Here's another one. As I walked up the hill, I realized that it was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bird who was almost always singing from the top of the maple tree. I thought I saw a shadow move high up on the slope, but when I looked again, it was gone. I felt goosebumps pop up on my arms. Reading that passage, that paragraph, is that first or third person? Looking at your pronouns, I heard a lot of eyes. So what is that gonna be? That's correct, that is first person. So let's look at the next one. As she walked up the hill, she realized that it was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bird who she so often heard singing from the top of the maple tree. She thought she saw a shadow move high up on the slope, but when she looked again, it was gone. She felt goosebumps pop up on her arms. Same story, change the pronoun. We heard a lot of she in there. Using the pronoun she, that first or third person? That's right, third person. Did you realize it was the same story? but told from two different point of views. In this story, if I can get it, I, I walked up the hill, I realized. Now that's me personally. So that is a story that might give me more of a feeling of being scared because it's happening to me. I might use words to make you believe that I was scared. And in the next, it's the same type of paragraph, the same context, but we just used the pronoun she. And it could give you a different feeling because you're not, you weren't really there, you're just reading about how she felt. Two different points of view. So how can you determine the point of view of the narrator when you read? So let's read here. This was my last stop of the day. I couldn't wait to get home and eat dinner. I climbed the steps and rang the doorbell. A long-haired dog ran to the window and started barking loudly at me. Be quiet, 
I heard a girl whisper, Mom's trying to sleep. The barking stopped as a brown-haired girl opened the door. She signed for the package I had brought her. Finally, I could head home. Now look at the question. In this question, it doesn't matter. Is it first person or third person? They don't really care. They want you to figure out who's telling the story. And how do you know? Well, we know it's in the first person. But how do we know who is telling the story? Is the person telling the story a mom, a young girl, a postal worker, or a dog? Well, to get the correct answer, what do I have to do? I have to go back into the text and find my evidence. Well, let's see. Do postal workers make stops during the day? Yes. Um, do they usually sometimes have packages you might have to sign for? Yes. Huh. So I wonder if the person telling the story is a postal worker. What do you all think? Oh, good. I heard some of you say a postal worker. You are correct. Good job. Now let's go to the next one. I was lying on the couch trying to sleep when I heard the doorbell ring. I rushed to the door, looked out the window, and started barking at the woman at the door. Be quiet, mom's trying to sleep, my owner whispered loudly to me. I headed back to the couch as the door was opened. Same story, a different point of view. Still written in first person, but whose point of view is this coming from? Is it the mom's point of view? A young girl's point of view? We already know it's not a postal worker because it was already chosen before. Or a dog? Well, let's go back into the text. Well lying on the couch well a mom and a girl and a dog could do that started barking oh maybe there's a clue which one of those barks a dog my owner whispered loudly oh yep i think i know do you know what it is who's telling the story that's right this is the point of view from the dog same story makes you feel a little different though doesn't it me too Last one. Ding dong. I opened my eyes, wondering if I should go get the door or try to go back to sleep. Just as I had decided to try to sleep, Fido started barking loudly. Ugh, I groaned as I climbed out of bed. I headed for the front door just in time to see my daughter taking a package out of the postal worker's hands. Well, who is telling this story? Well, we already know it's not the dog because the dog's name is Fido. It's not the dog. It's not coming from that point of view of the dog. Postal worker. The person telling the story is talking about a postal worker, so it's not the postal worker. I see my daughter. Now, is a mom, does a mom have a daughter, or does a young girl have a daughter? Uh, I don't think it's the young girl. Who do you think it is? That's right, mom. That was mom. She was like trying to sleep. And you remember in the first one, it said that the girl was trying to get the dog to be quiet so she wouldn't wake mom. That's right. So who's telling the story? That's right, a mom. A mom's telling the story. So understanding point of view. People don't always agree on things because we all have different life experiences that help have helped shape our opinions. Now you remember your opinion is something that you think. Fact, you can prove it. Opinions are just something that you think. We need to understand that you can't trust everything you read because authors have biases. They have their own opinion and they want you to believe like they do. So you have to be able to tell, are they trying to get me to persuade to believe like them or do I need to make my own opinion? And we have to know how to disagree with somebody that has a different opinion in a constructive than a rather than a hurtful way. And I know you all know this because in Second Steps, it talks about having empathy and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Would you want somebody arguing with you all the time and wanting you to believe like them? Or can you try to convince them without being hateful? Yeah, we know. So understanding point of view. Let's disagree in a respectful way. And we can understand both sides of an argument. Those of you have witnessed this probably on the playground. It's always an argument that breaks out and everybody 
whoever's in the argument, they want their side of the argument to win. But you have to be able to understand both sides of the argument before you can make a decision of who was wrong. So authors are not always right. So you have to have this way of understanding point of view when you are reading. So when you read, remember, how does the narrator's point of view affect the events in the narrative? So is the narrator trying to get you to believe like them? That's what we have to ask ourselves. What events make me believe like the narrator? What strategies can I use to determine the author's or the narrator's point of view? Like we just previously did, what strategies can we use? We can go back into the text and find evidence. And what sentence from the passage best supports the author's point of view? Oh my, this looks like a end of grade test question, maybe a mastery connect question. What sentence from the passage best supports the author's point of view? So you need to go back into the passage and find evidence that supports how the author is wanting you to believe what they're, what you're reading from them. So everybody's ever always heard of the story of the three little pigs. Yeah, we've heard this growing up. Three little pigs, there's a big bad wolf. He huffs and he puffs and he blows down two houses and then he gets to the third house and it's brick and he tries to get the three little pigs and he comes down the chimney. Yeah, you all know that story. But have you ever heard the story from the point of view of the wolf? This book is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. This is told from the point of view by a wolf. So the wolf is telling the story. Do you think the story changed? Yes, the story changed quite a bit because the point of view is coming from the wolf. He's wanting you to believe, hey, I'm not that bad of a wolf. These three little pigs making me out to be the big bad wolf. I am not that bad of a guy. That's what he's trying to get you to believe. So check out this little drawing. And you know, those of you that have me, Miss Raider is not an artist. We leave the artwork to Miss Moore. But I found this and I thought, oh, they will love this. If you see the little, it's a Venn diagram shaped like a pig and then shaped like a wolf. So what do you think? We're comparing and contrasting. We have similarities of the two books. And then what is different about the three little pigs and what is different about the three little pigs told from the wolf side of the story. The pig's version, the wolf's version. Always two sides to a story, right? Yes. So what do they have in common? They have straw house, stick house, the brick house. The brick house doesn't fall down. So in this, both stories, those are the same things. Well, the things that are different, if you read the pig's version, the pig at the end, the pigs, they cook the wolf because he comes down the chimney. And they named the wolf the big bad wolf. And the pigs are scared because, you know, the two older the two pigs, they run to the brother's house. It's made of bricks because so, they were scared. So in the version of the wolf side of the story, he says that the pigs were rude. All he was needing was some sugar. And he kept sneezing. He wasn't trying to blow anybody's house down. He had a cold. And he had to go to jail because they called the police on him. If you read this version you might start to think, well, that big bad wolf wasn't that bad. Why? Because the point of view has changed. If you've ever read, never read that book, here's a good time to read it. Now, what do we need to know? How does the narrator's point of view affect the events in the narrative? Well, the narrator's point of view completely affects your feelings about the pigs versus the wolf. Because if you read the story, of the wolf's version, you might start to think, that wolf was not that bad. All these years, they had me believing this wolf was a big bad wolf, but if you read his version, he's really not that bad. He just wanted to borrow some sugar. Wasn't that big of a deal, but the pigs made it out to be a big deal. And what strategies can you use to determine the author and narrative's point of view? the narrator's point of view. Well, we can determine if the story is written in first or third person. So in the 
Wolf's story, the ver- Wolf's version, he's writing that in first person because he's trying to get you to believe, I am not that bad of a wolf. And you need to pay attention, the strategies that you can use, pay attention to the words the narrator uses. Do the words persuade you to believe like them? And what sentence from the passage best supports the author's point of view? Go find the evidence in the story. You go back into the story and find what supports the point of view of the narrator. And in that wolf story, the wolf's version, when the wolf says, I was just wanting to borrow some sugar, you start to, like I said, you start to believe like maybe that wolf wasn't such a big, bad wolf. He just got a bad reputation from those three little pigs. Here is another one, the view of Cinderella versus the view from the wicked stepmother. Now we all know the Cinderella Disney story. Yes, wonderful story. And we know what happens with the wicked stepmother and the two stepsisters and how she has to work so hard. But now there's a version. Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying from the version of the wicked stepmother. So this is from the point of view of the wicked stepmother. It might make you believe that Cinderella was not all that and she was just annoying. So you do have time when you're at home, Google these stories and there's a read aloud, I'm sure that you can read about these and your point of view might change on these stories. So here's one, let's see if you can guess what this story is. This story is told from the perspective of two ants. The ants journey to somebody's house, climbing an unending mountain up the side a house. They spend the night in a sugar jar, and in the morning are scooped up and fall into a boiling brown lake, which is coffee. The adventure continues until the ants eventually make it back home. Students will enjoy hearing about everyday items told from an ant's point of view. Do you know that book? Let's see. Two bad ants. You may have heard that story before. Again, go and get the read aloud off of Google and they'll read it to you and you can determine the point of view from that story. So I'm going to leave you with one today. I'm going to give you the link. Can you identify the point of view? And we're going to click over here to this story. And we are going to see this story. Come up here. The day the crayons quit. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name. Okay, so that's a cute little story that you can go online. There's the web address. Let me bring it back up for you. Maybe. So you can go and you can watch the story of the day the crayons quit and try those strategies on to see which the point of view is. And some of your points of view may change. So enjoy the rest of the week. Get your work done. Um, And I will see you next week. Have a good weekend.